Okay, our Luma key worked fairly well there, and as you can see, we could sort of get pretty close to where we want to be in terms of laying her in against that background. But there is really some problems with that because there really isn't quite enough contrast between the foreground and the background to really let that Luma key work. There are some other things that we could do to try to tweak that, but what I'm going to show you right now is an alternative to that, which is called masking. I'm going to turn off my key here, and Again, with her selected in the foreground, I'm going to double click her. And what that's gonna do is open up what's called the layer window. And you can see the layer window here looks something like a combination of the composition window and of the timeline itself. And you can see you have a timeline control here. In her case, because she's a still, it doesn't really matter. But this is the timeline of the composition anyway. Plus you have some other controls here in terms of moving through time and taking snapshots and viewing different channels and all that sort of stuff. Again, because this is a still, a lot of these don't necessarily apply in this particular case. So what we're going to do now is do some masking. And masking is a type of drawing, essentially, where you draw a shape around an image, a foreground image, in order to remove it from its background or remove other elements from that image. By the way, I'm going to grab my hand tool here and just drag her around a little bit. Another way to invoke the hand tool here is if I have my regular selection cursor here, I can hold down the space bar that turns it temporarily into the hand tool. And so when I let go, I can get back my regular select cursor there. So as you can see, as I work with this image, we're going to be dragging her around in here, and I'm going to be holding down the space bar at times to bring up the hand tool rather than just jumping over here and doing that. So what a mask is, as I mentioned, is a shape that you draw around an image in order to isolate elements of that image. And then what we want to do in this particular case is remove her from her background and mask her into the background that we have in our composition already, our flames. So the way you do that is with a pen tool. So you select the pen tool here. And specifically what we're doing here is called rotoscoping. And rotoscoping is a technique that also goes way back to the original days of animation, whereby the animators would shoot live action and then trace on the film itself with pen and ink and other tools like that with paint and so forth to reproduce a cartoon version of that motion that was actually shot. So a lot of times you'll see rotoscoping as a technique to get realistic motion in animation. Rotoscoping nowadays means to paint directly into frames, whether those are digital frames or, or even film frames, in order to remove foregrounds from backgrounds. That's what rotoscoping is most commonly used for today. So what we're going to be doing here is a simple form of rotoscoping. And in order to do that, I have to tell you a little bit about how the masking tools work here. These masking tools, the pen draws a continuous line with points that you place at particular points along the way. So what I'm going to do is just going to start drawing. I'm not even really going to be drawing. I'm just going to be moving my pen along here and placing points along the edge of the figure. I'm just going to go around here and place these points at different locations, kind of tracing around her edge there. You can see that if you position this on one of these points, it actually removes that point, which is what happened there. So and you can see also that as I'm doing this, there's a line that's connecting these points as I'm moving along here. So I'm kind of roughly outlining her as I am clicking around here with these points. I'm going to drag down here, again, holding down this space bar to invoke the hand tool. And I don't have to be super precise about trying to follow every curve here, as you'll see in a minute. I really just have to kind of get close to these edges in order to create this outline that I want. Oops, I just removed that. So I'm going to do Command Z to redo that. There we go.
again, just kind of roughly outlining here. And then when I get back to the beginning of my line again, if I click on that, it'll complete that shape. Now in our next video, we'll take a look at those masking tools in a little bit more detail and show you how they work.